Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. If you've been following the news, you know that our government decided recently to start gassing people at the border. Uh, Tear gas, which has been sort of talked about jokingly in the news uh, on the right wing side. Uh, But it is a serious situation and uh, it leads one to wonder who is benefiting from this new use of this crowd control material. Uh, Joining us now to help break that down based on his reporting, Ken Klippenstein of TYT Investigates. Ken, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Always glad to have you here. And uh, so I'm curious, this uh, the, the the manufacturer that made the tear gas used in this incident last weekend, uh, you've tracked down who that is and you've done some research into their activities. Can you uh, break down this company for us? Yeah, so the company is called Safari Land and people always kind of frown when I uh, use that word. It's a very strange uh, name if you look at the company biography. It, it literally goes back to, um, I think it was someone in maybe the 30s who would go on safaris with their uh, wealthy father in, uh, in Africa. Um, uh, so that's, that's the name of the company. And uh, I think that projects pretty, I think that's pretty, you know, fair, fair name for it. Um, it's kind of, it seems that if you go on the website, it has a lot of uh, very enthusiastic looking law enforcement individuals and they describe how they're saving lives all the time. And um, what they manufacture is what's called crowd control. Um, that's kind of a euphemism for you know tear gas, various chemical uh, agents they use to try to control crowds, batons, um, uh, riot shields, uh, that kind of thing. So um, if you sort of look at the website, uh, they're talking about saving officers' lives, like law enforcement lives. They don't really have a whole lot to say about <laughs> about the 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 you know the other people, the ordinary people. And so this company, actually, oddly enough, and the name sort of sticks out, has come up in the news a couple of other times. And so you identified in your piece, which is available at tyt.com, the connection to both the the protests at Standing Rock and also the family separation issue earlier this year. Can you can you go through those with us? Yeah. So they've been implicated in so many things. Um, it's amazing that it hasn't been reported more. I thought, and that's why I wrote the story. Um, so they had provided a lot of the tear gas that police used on Ferguson protesters at the time. Um, people would go through the canisters, and you could see the company's name on it. And then also at Standing Rock, um, and um, you know, I should point out at Standing Rock, uh, you know, one woman almost they almost had to amputate her arm. Um, another person became permanently blind from being hit in the face with a tear gas canister. I mean, these things. You know, they call them non-lethals, but really a better word for it is less lethal. Maybe it kills less people than an actual bullet would. Um, but that's not to say that it doesn't uh, kill people, it kills people all the time. And in addition to that, it can, you know, seriously injure or maim uh, people as it's done at these demonstrations. So I was kind of shocked when I found out that um, at the Tijuana border, um, they were finding the exact same munitions. Because, I mean, you know, there are many um, tear gas manufacturers. Why does this one keep coming up again and again? And this one, apparently, based on one of the charts that you show in your article, is it's not just you know still having its products bought by the government, but apparently it's making more and more money in the the recent past. That's what was most astonishing to me. Um, the uh, the sales have just skyrocketed under the Trump administration. I mean, you can look at the uh, subcontracts from the Defense Department that they've received. Um, these are numbers in the tens of millions. And um, around 2017, it increases pretty dramatically. And then 2018, it just explodes. They just shattered all records in terms of subcontracts from the Defense Department. And what was interesting to me about that is why does, you know, why does DOD need this? Wouldn't you think it would be maybe local law enforcement or uh, SWAT teams, that kind of thing? Um, the, uh, presumably, the National Guard is getting it. Um, so I would think that that would be a cause for concern when we're seeing it used on women and children as we have on the, on the border. Exactly. And uh, so as you mentioned, this is uh, best described as less lethal, still dangerous. Uh, so I just want a quick check with you based on your research. I've seen uh, two descriptions of, of the effect of these crowd control chemicals. Uh, Trump said it's just a lesser form of tear gas, so perfectly fine, you can use it on kids. <laughs> and uh, a Fox News guest said that the pepper spray, you could spread it on your nachos. Can you confirm <laughs> either of those two descriptions? Well, you know, I like spicy food. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I like my, uh, but even I, I don't think I, I don't think I do that. <laughs> uh, but um, more seriously, uh, it, it, children's bodies can't handle it. There's been, um, you know, some good academic work on this. Surprisingly little. I'm surprised there's not more, given you know that that we allow law enforcement to use these things. But um, children's lungs are just not, uh, you know, developed enough to be able to handle them. Um, there was a good report on this by a reporter by the name of Paul Gottinger. You can. Look it up, and he just details how this can literally kill kids, you know, far easier than it could adults. And then, of course, these are carcinogens, so that's not safe in itself. Yeah. But um, you know, a bigger question is, um, do these sort of 
uh, you know, resort to force, does that work? Or it seems to be sort of an open question in the criminological literature that I've seen. Uh, cause you know, there's, there's, there's good evidence for that. You know, this can inflame tensions, uh, you know, in situations where maybe they're trying to disperse protesters and things. So it's not even clear to me that, yeah, you know, even for its, even in its, um, technically proper use that, that, that it's, that it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it is economically good if you're selling it, especially right. in this current climate. And right. so I want to stay on money. One last topic. Uh, you've also found the uh, owner and CEO is Warren Canders of Safari Land, uh, has made some political donations that sort of stood out. Could you explain that for us? Yeah. So he's a longtime Republican donor. He gives huge sums. I mean, if you were looking at the total, it's probably in the hundreds of thousands, maybe, maybe even a little millions. Um, and and these are direct contributions, you know, to campaigns. Uh, and the caps are generally, you know, lower than they are to like super PACs and things. So that's that's very significant. You know, it's a lot of money in the in the direct political contributions uh, world. Um, but what was interesting was uh, there was there was pretty much there was basically one prominent exception, maybe a couple of smaller ones. But the prominent exception was Cory Booker. I noticed that in 2014, I believe it was. He started giving uh, pretty large uh, contributions to him, uh, and not just Candace, but his wife as well. They also co-hosted their private fundraiser for Booker. And um, <laughs> to my surprise, I look at Booker's uh, Twitter, and you know he was condemning the tear gas use in, in Tijuana, which you know I suppose is good. But uh, the tear gas was the company that's giving him all this uh, money and, and hosting private fundraisers yeah. for him. That so that struck me as a bit of a you know inconsistency to say the least. Yeah, and interesting. I saw in in your research that Hillary Clinton had actually apparently given back some of the money a few years back that that had been provided by these people. Um, so one of the reasons I want to talk about this is I think this is a great opportunity for Cory Booker to return that money and not accept your money from either Safari Land or related industries. Hopefully, he's paying attention. Yeah, I asked him about. I asked his press secretary about it, and I have yet to hear back. But maybe we'll see something about it because it did seem to generate quite a stir, and I was. Surprised by you know people didn't seem happy about it even even people that sort of you know I saw people say you know like oh I thought Booker was a nice guy I can't believe that he would that he would do something like that and you know maybe it was oversight who knows um, I mean when there's a private fundraiser that you know it suggests a little more than just a contribution yeah but the fact of the matter is he knows about it now and he hasn't responded yeah so we'll have to watch and see uh, still Ken Klippenstein thank you so much for joining us as always thanks a lot for having me thank you. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.